Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we will be tackling another lead code problem which is called the gas station problem. We are going to explore this problem from a couple of different angles. So let's read the problem first. There are N gas stations along a circular route where the amount of gas at the IS station is gas I and you have a car with an unlimited gas tank and it costs cost of I for us to travel from station I to station I plus one. And we begin our journey with an empty tank at one of these N stations. Um, and then now given two integer arrays, gas and cost, we want to return the starting gas stations index if there is a solution. Otherwise, we're going to return minus one. If there is a solution, it's guaranteed to be unique. OK, so let's actually now highlight the keywords here so we can we can keep an eye on those. Uh, first of all, we are dealing with a circular route, then unlimited gas tank. That's the ability of the car. We start with an empty tank. What else? We're going to return. So the output is going to be if there is a solution, it's going to be the index um, of the starting gas station. And then um, we're going to go clockwise in a circular path. And there, if there is no, res no solution, we're going to return minus one. And if there is a solution, it has to be unique. That means as soon as we find a solution, we're going to stop there because we know that there, there, there has to be just one. Okay, so this gas station problem is not an intuitive one. Um, wait, unlimited gas tank? What kind of car is this? And why a circular pass? Anyway, it is what it is. So we're going to try to solve it. Okay, so let's visualize an example here. And um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to assume that we have uh, five different gas stations with indices from zero to four. And there are two integer arrays, cost and gas. For this input, the correct answer is gas station at index three. So let's take this car for a spin. Okay, so starting from index three, we get four units of gas and the cost is one. That means we arrive at index four with three gas in the tank. Okay, now here we get another five gas totaling eight so far but we're going to burn two gas to get into index zero. So now we have a six in the tank, right? At index zero, what's going to happen is we're going to get another one unit of gas, which brings our total to seven. Now we're going to burn three gas to get into index one. So we have four now. At index one, we're going to get another two. That's going to bring our total to six, but we're going to burn four of those in order to get into index two. So now we have left two units of gas in the tank. And then finally, at index two, we get another three gas, which brings our total to five. And it turns out we exactly need five gas in order to go back to index number three. Okay, so we just proved that it was possible for us to actually go around this circuit and arrive to three again. So one important observation here is that um, if the total gas available across all different station is less than the total cost, then there is obviously going to be no optimal solution. Therefore, we can complete the trip only if the total gas available is greater than or equal the total cost. OK, so that's one thing for now. Um, so what we're going to do next is we will start with a brute force solution or approach to gain a deep, better understanding of the problem. Then hopefully we're going to move on to more efficient strategies. OK, so the approach here is checking each station as a potential starting point and so what we do here is we iterate through the gas station starting at each station and then checking if we can complete a circuit without running out of gas. And then we repeat this process for each station and we return the first station that works 
if we couldn't find any, we're going to return minus one. So there is no solution for this problem. So let's say we have five station. What we're going to do uh, is, let's say, for example, we're going to start from station number two. So what's going to happen here is um, we can't just increment the indices linearly, right? So this is not a linear kind of, kind of pattern. We need to create a circular pattern. So we can do that. Probably the, the, the easiest way to do that would be using the reminder of division by n, which is the length of the array's gas or cost. Okay, so let's code this up and see what do we get. Okay, so this is a very simple implementation of this idea. In line number four, we're going to loop over all possible gas station. Then for each subsequent station in a circular pattern, we check whether we can make it that far. If we ran out of gas, what's going to happen? We're going to break out of the loop. Now, you might ask, why do we need line 11 and 12 here? Okay, so um, this is to make sure we understand why we got here in the sequence of the code. So did the loop break? If that's the case, that means there was no solution for that starting point. So we have to check, we have to try another starting point. But, but maybe the loop was terminated successfully. If that happened, that means we just found a solution, right? So, so this, these two lines are just to make sure we actually know what's happening. Now, let's see what do we have here. This gives us a correct but quadratic solution. We definitely have to try to do better. So let's let's see if we can do better. Um, the next thing we're going to do here is let's take a look at a different example. So so hopefully this this example can motivate us to do better. Um, and what we're going to do here is again we have five stations and we we are given two arrays cost and gas. This time we begin our journey at um, index zero and and see how far we can go. Okay, so let's 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 begin. So we're going to go all the way up to index three. That's it. So we started at zero and we made our way to index three, but couldn't reach four. In fact, if you sum everything up, you will see we were short for two units of gas here. Otherwise, we were able to do it, right? We could have been to, able to do it if we had an extra two units of gas, but we didn't. Okay, so if you look carefully here, you will see that next, we don't need to try indices one or two. If we do so, it's guaranteed we get a stock at three again. Therefore, starting from I, if we get a stock at J, that means starting from anywhere between I and J won't work either. So if you don't see why is this, think about it this way. When we got from zero to one, that means our leftover gas was non-negative. So if we didn't make it with zero, we won't make it without it, right? It's, it's only going to help, right? Now, if you don't have zero, if you're starting from one, we're still not going to make it, right? Because we didn't make it the first time around. And um, now let's get back to the problem here. The next thing, therefore, we're going to do here is starting from J plus one, which is going to be index four, right? So that means we have to we have to basically go through this circular pattern here. And now if you look closely, you're going to see another very interesting thing here. Um, actually, you can see that we already solved a big chunk of this problem in the, the first time around. So what does this mean is we only need to check the balance of getting from four to zero because we already know how hard it is from getting zero to four. So we already know that if we had an extra two units of gas, we were able to make it. Now, all we have to do is we have to check going from zero to four or actually four to zero here, sorry. Um, if, 
if the balance is going to be greater than or equal to positive 2, that means 4 is going to be the answer. Otherwise, we are done and there is no solution to this problem. So this is going to be our observation number 3. Now, we have three very, very important observations. What we're going to do next is we're going to take advantage of all these three important observations we've made so far. And we're going to solve, we're going to try to solve each sub problem using dynamic programming only once in a bottom up fashion. So, for example, observation number three tells us that. Um, if we don't actually realize these characteristics of the problem, we're going to end up solving sub problems more than once. So how do we, how do we fix this? So let's, let's take a, take a, this very simple implementation that we're doing. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to solve each sub problem only once. And then we let, we, we're going to keep track of our total gas balance passing through all the station. Okay. So this is how this is going to work. We're going to loop through each and every station. Then we're going to check, um, we're going to have one variable total gas, which is going to help us check whether there is a solution at all. Based on our observation number one, we, we want to make sure that we're going to be, our total balance is positive, right? Or zero. It has to be non-negative if there's a solution. And then the current gas helps us kind of identify the optimal starting point in case there is a solution. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is um, when we actually run out of gas, we're going to update the start index jumping I units forward. This is going to be based on our observation number two. But that's just for the index. I want you to realize that it does not change the order of the sub problem we are solving here. Okay, so at the end, if total gas is non-negative, that means there must be a solution. And if that's the case, we know where to find that, right? The optimal starting point is stored in, in variable start, and we're just going to retrieve it from there. Now, okay, let's see what do we got here. This is a linear solution. Amazing. Cool. But um, one thing though, um, this problem is tagged as greedy on lit code, which is, which is confusing to a lot of people. If you're thinking what's greedy about this problem, then you're not alone. Many people refer to our last solution as a greedy solution, which is which does not quite make sense. But to be fair, it's possible to approach this problem from a greedy perspective. The question is whether it's going to be it's going to be a better solution or it's a, or a faster solution or or not. So let's see. Um, there's one way of doing it, and let's not mistake this idea with our solution. Um, so what we were doing is we were passing through all the stations once while this solution is more similar to our brute force approach and we are solving some problems again and again here but we're going to skip some stations between i and j for the next starting point now here is a more interesting one let's make a greedy choice by starting with a gas station with the highest gain which we can define as the maximum um, positive difference between gas and cost. So, so the station that has the maximum difference of gas and cost, and um, we're going we're gonna to start with that because that is going to be the most helpful or the best place to start because we're going to we're going to we're going to keep the the most amount of gas in the tank moving to the next station, right? So, this is definitely a greedy choice, and if that didn't work. What we're going to do next is we're going to move to the next or the second highest gain, second station with the highest gain. And we keep trying our greedy choices moving forward. So instead of trying things linearly, we're going to basically try different starting point using our greedy choice here. But wait a second, should we actually bother coding this up? The problem. 
Probably not, right? Because both of this will be slower than our current DB solution. Um, depends on the implementation. The best we can achieve here would be N log N. All right, that's for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, and I will see you in the next video.